It's one and one. Jeff Breidich is with us. Jeff's a little bit under the weather. We're going to warn you, so we're going to keep our discs a little bit. How you doing? <laughs> Great. Yeah. How are you? Other than feeling like not very good. Yeah. Yeah. It's that time you said it usually hits you around the draft because you're not getting a lot of sleep. Just every once in a while, it gets you. Does it feel like you're cramming for the draft when you get into this time frame? Um, no, guys. I mean, I speaking a little bit for for, for Billy and and Danny and Gus and and the rest of the guys, but um, you know, there's so, so much work that's been put in all year that um, you know, I, I think that everybody pretty pretty much by this time has a has a good sense of. Of if you're an area guy, if you're area, if you're a cross checker, if, if you, you, you know you've seen who you need to see, or needed to see, and so um, the cramming I think is more probably about the information, you know, what what last minute information is out there about the uh, the draft of the players. Let's show you exactly how the draft will uh, take place from a Rockies perspective. Here are the first five teams that'll draft: Minnesota, Cincinnati, the Padres, Tampa, and then Atlanta. The Rockies do not have their 11th pick that was uh, lost in the signing of Ian Desmond. So the first pick the Rockies will have is number 48 and then they'll have number 70 number 86. So three of the top 86 and that's a little different for you guys as an organization in preparation because if you know if you have five or ten you probably can narrow it down to a, a relative handful when it's 48 you got to go see a lot of folks don't you. Well. I mean, our, our process really didn't change at all, right? We're responsible for knowing every single area um, in the country, you know, all the Canadian players, all the Puerto Rican players. We got to know them all. So that doesn't change based on where you pick. Um, the waiting around certainly is going to be different for us. That's not something that uh, is, is the norm for us. And uh, watching 47 players go off the board is, is something that we're not used to um, before we make our first pick. Uh, so, you know, the, the I think the strategy and the, and the waiting around will have to be a little bit different, but our knowledge of and our thoughts on our convictions in the players that we see should not, uh, you know, and won't be any different. Well, that's three, you know, excuse me, one six. Sensatella, who's normally a big time strike thrower after the walk to Santana, struggling with command, and he battled a little bit of this in Seattle. He's behind Jose Ramirez. Well, normally you'll see Senzatella find his release point after throwing an off-speed pitch, but in a 3-0 count, it's not typically an off-speed pitch situation. Thank you, Jose Ramirez. Right, fired at that 3-0 pitch, three and one. I'm sorry, Spilly, though you were. I'm ask always you. curious now that the the game has changed for from the amateur standpoint. A lot more kids are going to showcases and, and playing in these type of games. Does it make a difference for you? Are you guys paying attention to these showcases? Can it really help out a kid as much as they think it does? That's helpful. The old 363. Three. Go ahead. So the answer is yeah, the showcase has been going on for a little while now. Um, they are scouted just as heavily, if not more heavily, than probably Games. anything else. Yeah, I mean, it, it is a, you know, it's a true collection of talent. Um, you know, sometimes players, based on uh, their playing schedule, their school schedule, whatever else they're how they feel their injury you know something else might happen where they don't participate in a certain term tournament here or there um, but most of the time these these showcases are for better or for worse they are a collection of some of the best talent that high school baseball has to offer in, in this country so yeah it, i think it would be really remiss if we weren't you know the organization if we weren't there and weren't there in force and uh, our guys do a great job of of being everywhere when you we need to be every single year to make sure we have a handle on uh, the talent. Two strikes on a young kid, former number one pick at a USF, University of San Francisco, Bradley Zimmer. In a while, Jeff, how he could be one pitch and then all of a sudden. Yeah, he, we were a little worried here, weren't we? Well, well when he's throwing darts again, right? That's, that's why defense and especially our ability to turn double plays, um, you know, it's been. Not just this year. I mean, if you look at our history, Spilly, you were a part of it back in, you know, 07 and, and 9 and 10. I mean, it, it, we, we defended, you know, we defended the ground ball. We turned double plays and we made good plays when we had to. And this, year, part of and this year, collectively, and you figured, we all did, that this would be a very good defensive team. And it is maybe the best in baseball so far. Um. Yeah, you know, I'm certainly a biased opinion. Yeah, but I mean, you have to be yeah, from where you sit. You have to be 
really pleased with how it's gone. Okay. That's strike three. We'll come back more with Jeff Breidich, the Rockies general manager, in a moment. Safely through the second inning is Antonio Sensatella. No score at Coors Field.